Welcome to Excel Magic Trick 1921. And in this video, we're going to see how to create an automatic checkbook bank reconciliation formula. Actually, formulas, because we got to have one for our bank balance and one for the bank balance. Now we'll work on the sheet 1921. And I'll show you the single input, single output formula first. That means individual cell references. And then we'll do a dynamic spill array formula. And here's the ultimate problem when you're tracking your bank account balance. And the bank is also tracking it. If you go to the bank and try and find this number, well, they might not know about all the transactions in your book. Similarly, the bank might have transactions that you don't know about. But for us, we want to worry about this column right here. Our book balance has to take into consideration everything. So we need to add or subtract for each particular cell. So for example, for our bank balance, we'd have to manually say, hey, I'm going to take this, minus this, minus this, minus this, plus, plus, and that would be the balance. But for the bank, they don't know about this one. So it would be in is a plus, minus, 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 plus, but forget that one. Enter. So somehow, automatically, we need to get these two different balances based on the Y in this column. Not only that, but the key is we open the website with the bank balance. And once we find a transaction, like this one right here, we simply type a Y, Enter. And now the bank balance updates. And what do we do? We look at this number, check if it's the same over there. If they are, bam, we have reconciled. Not only that, but the formula should work if we don't know about those two, but now we just looked at our website and we found this number. So why it better subtract it? And sure enough, it did. But notice up here, we still have these previous balances, which are correct for the bank, but not for us. All right, let's see how to do this. Now, since the formulas are going to be looking at the letter Y in this column, it might be helpful to highlight in advance Go up to Data, over to Data Tools, and we want to add Data Validation. When I click, we're allowed to create a rule that says, hey, what goes into each cell? I don't want to allow the default any value. I want a list. And check this out. I can just type the letter Y, and it is text. I don't even have to put it in double quotes. Click OK. And now in each cell, I have a Y. That way, we don't accidentally type Y space or an X and mess up our formula. Now, for my book balance, I obviously need to add and subtract, but it's always going to be looking at the previous balance. So watch this. Equals, I'm going to click on that cell. That really won't work because it's not a number. It's text, but let's try it. Plus. Whatever the in is, minus whatever the out is. And notice we can have a formula with these two cell references pointing here, minus and plus, because when we don't put something there, it's just going to be 0. But of course, Control-Enter, that value error says you put something incorrect into this formula, F2. And sure enough, the operators, plus, minus, and other math operators, they don't work on text. But here's a killer trick equals the sum function is programmed to ignore text. So I just say, hey, that as a positive, comma, in for this row as a positive, comma, minus whatever we put for this row in out. And that is a beautiful trick when you're trying to create a formula for a running balance. It worked. And look at that. It totally ignored the text in one cell above. Now to copy this formula all the way down, that little green box in the lower right corner, that's the fill handle. Right now, that's called the selection cursor. But if you hover over the fill handle, you see the crosshair. That's what Bill Gates calls it. I like to call it the angry rabbit. And you can click and drag. And this copies the formula down. 
Now we can pick any particular cell, F2 to put it in edit mode. And sure enough, it's doing its job. It's looking at one cell above the previous balance. And then it's subtracting E7 and adding from F7, 0. And F2 right there, sum has no problem with that text. Now what we'd like to do is only have the formula appear when we enter a date. So from row 12 down, I don't want these formulas to show. But as soon as I put a date, I want that formula to pop up. Well, we're going to put one of two things in the cell. And anytime you do that, F2. That's the perfect job for the if function. So after the equal sign and before sum, I F. I see it in the drop down. I hit tab. Now we need a logical test. And that logical test has to come out true or false. All I'm going to say is, hey, is there a date? But wait a second. What is a date? A date is a number. So I'm going to use a function, actually nest a function right inside of logical test, is number. I see it there. I hit tab. The value, well, it's going to be a relative cell reference. So as we copy down, it's always going to look at the date in this row. Close parentheses, comma, and I'm going to click back. That is number is going to deliver a true or false to logical test. And if it comes out true, that means there's a date in this row. That's the formula it's going to run. Now we come to the end, comma. What do we want if it's not a date? That means this is number delivers a false. Well, we're going to use the syntax to show nothing. Double quote, double quote. Now, technically, that is a zero length text string. So it is something. It's text with zero length. But that's what we use in a formula to show nothing. Now close parentheses, Control Enter. And now instead of using my angry rabbit and clicking and dragging, because there's formulas all the way down, I can simply double click and it sends it all the way down. And that is looking good. F2 right here. Actually, I think we can hover. See, it says false. So what did it do? It did not put value if true. So that formula didn't run in this cell. All it did was display nothing. Whereas F2, click on logical test hover, that got a true. So sure enough, the value of true, it ran the formula. Now let's test it. 12 slash 3, enter. And sure enough, the formula pops up. Now this amount is. 792.36 and enter. And there it's working both ways. It's showing up when we enter a date. And when we add a new number, it adjusts the book balance. Now, the formula to calculate the bank balance is very similar. But check this out. We need to consider whether a Y is in the reconcile column. We also have to include that date condition. Is there a date in this row? If yes, then show the formula. And this formula is not going to be looking at the previous balance in my book balance. It's going to be looking at the previous balance in this column. Now, let's start off with if equals if. And for the logical test, if we find a y in this row, that's g4, we ask the question, hey, are you equal to in double quotes? Because that y is text, and text always has to be in double quotes. So that's the logical test, true or false, comma. If it comes out true, then we want our sum function looking at the previous balance for this column, comma, in, comma, minus the out. Now I want to close parentheses. And if that y is not there, meaning it comes out false, comma, I just want the previous balance. And what that will do, for example, right here, since there's no y, the formula will come out false. And what is it going to do? It's not going to calculate the new balance. It's just going to grab the previous value and repeat it. So there we go, close. Control Enter. Now we could point to the fill handle with our angry rabbit and click and drag. But watch this. This is a cool trick. If I try right now, there's nothing next to it or below it or on the right of it. But if I highlight the cell right there and this, now that's touching something. So when I double click and send it down, it goes all the way down. If I go to the last cell and hit F2, I'm just verifying if all the cell references are correct. And they are. Now let's turn it off once we don't have a row with a date. F2, 
back-to-back -back if functions, if, and then is number. We're checking out the date in this column, the B column, as a relative cell reference. Close, comma. So that comes out true or false. Right now it's true. Value of true, bam, that's what we want to run. Comma at the end, if it's false, double quote, double quote, that zero length text string to show nothing. Close, control enter, double click and send it down. And that is working. If I put a Y here and enter, our formula is updating. All right, now when I started the video, I said I'm going to show you the dynamics build array formula in this video, but no, I'm not going to do that because there's a bunch of new concepts and ideas. And so we'll leave the single input, single output for Excel Magic Trick 1921. And next video in 1922, we'll see how to use some cool functions and create a dynamics build array formula. All right, we'll see you next Excel Magic Trick. Thank <laughs> you.